Um, it's nice to see Harold Foster back in the squad again. And uh, obviously, he is uh, tailor-made to, to be there. Um, your reasoning behind Foster's inclusion in this uh, quite bullish team? Yeah, so Simon, he was injured um, and he would have been picked uh, sometime when he came back anyway. As it turned out, David uh, David got a hearing and so we were, we put him in and then when David got uh, rescinded, his card got rescinded, we, we just decided as a group we'd leave it in as is. So it's nice. I mean, he's got a lot of experience. Um, it's going to rain tomorrow, so probably having him in the midfield next to Canaan is going to help us just in terms of a little bit more control. And I'm talking about as in age, uh, a little bit more experience. Um, and, and, you know, repeating myself as I do every week is we were always going to rotate our squad, change, keep some players fresh. And when you look at our squad, Zach, Harold, uh, Jan Hendrik, uh, Kaba, um, I'm trying to think who else. Um, Cameron, who didn't play much last week because he was on the bench. Uh, Henry Immelman, you know, that's obviously a lot of guys that have, are, are really fresh because they haven't had much rugby. And I'm hoping that that energy and freshness is is seen tomorrow. Really? Um, is he uh, taking a little bit of a break? Yeah, Simon. So, I mean, again, part of the um, protocols of SA Rugby is to give them time off. Um you know, I'm assuming, and quite rightly so, that he'll go on the end of your tour, and that means they get together in about uh, two weeks' time. Um, so, yeah, it was it was only fair that after a long rugby championship and incoming tour series that some of those players get some time off. Um, and that was this was the, the the planning we put together with him is that he'd have a game, play, miss the next two weeks, and then get ready for the test matches. Last one from me, and uh, I don't want you to elaborate too much. I know that it's a difficult subject to discuss. It's David Krill, you've raised the matter. Uh, is that uh, some kind of a vindication for rugby, especially URC rugby, and the application of the rules? Gee, Simon, thanks, man. And and uh, and what you've just said is that it's exactly that. It's a vindication of this competition will grow. I spoke to Tapa Henning this morning, and I just said I'm going to mention that you know, what coaches want is they want an opportunity with a player to sometimes uh, state their case. And I've got to compliment the, the judiciary and the way it was done. You know, they allowed the player to talk about what happened at the spur of the moment in that in that situation. And it was handled incredibly professionally. And, it, and it's a great step forward for us, Simon, because it means that that when you do have a legitimate case and you genuinely feel like you, you would like to present it to a judiciary, it shouldn't be a feeling of, gee, we, we're poking the bear and we're going to get even more penalized now. I mean, that is always a fear of when you go to those sort of hearings that you think it's it's guilty. And if you argue, it will be more guilty. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm very happy that it was handled the way it was. It was seen in the way it was. Um, it's rescinded. And I, and I think what's important to understand, Simon, is... Players don't want to have the record of a red card next to their name in their professional careers. Um, so, you know, to say just accept it and get a lenient uh, or a more lenient sentence is sometimes, uh, you know, the worst thing you can do because that red card stays on your on your profile forever. So I would like to say that I'm very, very happy the way it was done. I'm very happy with the outcome. And obviously, I'm very happy as a coach that when you do present a legit case, um, it's not. It's not an. It's not an indictment or a, or attack on any of the officials. You know, there's human error, and and I think that also just proves that when there is human error, um, it can be it can be rescinded. And so I'm very very happy with with the way that it was dealt this week. Thanks, Jake. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, right, Jake. It's Ashok. How's it? Ashok, how are you going? Right, right, man. Um, you you left out the captain. Ruan is is uh, he taking a break as well? Yes, yeah. So captain will be Aka. Um, he captain against uh, Edinburgh for us. Um, and then obviously if he comes off, we've got Krubla or we've got Reinhard Ludwig that can take over and uh, control the the captaincy. But uh, yeah, the the captain for the weekend is Aka van der Merwe. Yeah, so so just the effect on the lineup there. Obviously, we know Ruan Luke is a superb uh, lineup organizer and jumper. Kobus Risa has played 
five and seven and four even um over the years yeah just in terms of the calling you you happy with what you've got there um yeah Ashak, um i mean it is it is a it is something that we we don't take for granted having a guy like uh, Ruan Nokia who now calls the lineup for south africa um but we can't rely on on Ruan Nokia every single saturday for 80 minutes i think it to be fair we you know we got to be good enough to upskill players in and around the the team so you know so we got Reinhard Ludwig you know he's called the lineup before Krubus has called the lineup before um so we should be covered there. I mean, you, you obviously can't buy experience, but the only way you're going to learn or the only way you're going to adapt or the only way you're going to grow is to be put in that environment. So I'm sure we'll be okay, Ashraf. Just one more, uh, uh, Jake, in terms of Henry Immelman, um, he's sort of had a difficult time since he joined the Bulls. They had a few injuries, but whenever he plays, he seems to score tries as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, now at fullback, and obviously he played in Scotland before, so uh, you would expect him to handle wet and rain and wind. Yeah, he's just been so unfortunate, Ashfaq. I mean, he injuries. I mean, right at the beginning when he came to us, he had a you know mis, a misfortune of of uh, you know of a off the field incident as well. And you know, he, someone tried to steal his cell phone, and he you know he he obviously got injured, so that put him out for a while. But I mean, he's now back, and and he was always, as I said, always going to get a chance as well. He's played wing and full back. He's played at Montpellier in in the French Championship. He's played in, you know, in the URC for Edinburgh. He's played in European Cup games, um, and got a you know massive boot as you all know. And tomorrow with the rain, you know, maybe it, it's a it's an added advantage to have his experience, but also the length of his kick out of his half. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Come on. Ati. Thanks, Luma. I was waiting for you there. Hi, Coach. How are you? Okay. Yeah, Ati. Good. Thanks, man. Good. Coach, I mean, um, just uh, from the past year, you know, since I've been uh, covering you, um, I've quite heard you narrate, you know, um, how rugby has moved through different eras and phases during the professional era. Um, right now, with where we are with SA Rugby, with the equity deal, um, just your thoughts on that and how important is this phase, you know, in the context of rugby moving forward? Um, just wanted to get your thoughts on that, Coach. Yeah, look, Ati, I mean, you know me well enough to know I'm not going to talk about equity deals and SA Rugby. I mean, I I don't understand that all. And, you know, all I will say is that we rugby is in South Africa as strong as it's been for, for a long, long time. Um, and, you know, whatever, whatever whatever we need to do, we need to make sure that we stay ahead of the curve on and off the field. But it would be wrong of me to start commenting on whether it's a good or bad thing or whether the deal should go through or not go through. Because as you can imagine, I'm not privy to all that information. Yeah. Coach, uh, just looking ahead to this weekend's game, um, again, how important is this in future again um, in terms of getting two and two on tour? Yeah. Uh, moving forward uh, with that momentum, um, you yeah. know, as you talk about these key phases of the season. I tell you, you know, again, take this. You always ask me, how does this game, you know, where does this game fit in and how does this game and is it important? And I, and I suppose I sound like a stuck record. Every game the Bulls play in a franchise like us is important. Every win is is important. Every... You know, it doesn't matter. It's away. It doesn't matter. It's home. You know, you play at home. You have your home crowd. You play away. It's an away. It's a away win. Um, I'm very fortunate in that the club um, and the players and the organisation understand that whenever we wear the Bulls jersey, whenever we run out, there's an expectation from us as a group and from our supporters to win. And in the bigger scheme of things, as long as you focus on that, you know, you play as best you can. Then there's nothing more that I can ask for. So. You know, whether it's the you know second game on tour, whether it's the you know the fourth game in the league, or whether it's the second time you've played these guys, or whatever it is, whatever you want to use as a motivation, it's it's important that we just keep you know momentum, winning, all those things are, are given. We just got to make sure that we we play as well as we can every time we play for the Bulls. Thanks, coach. Uh, thanks, Lunga. Thanks, Adi. Jake, Brendan, yeah, um, I hope it's going well there in Wales. Just wanted to get your 
thoughts on Scarlets, their win over Cardiff, what you saw there, and also coming up against Albert van der Berg, who obviously will have a couple of tricks up his sleeve as well. Yeah, yeah, they, they, funny enough, they, they, the one team that's beaten us. I mean, I, I wasn't here in January; it was that year that I got that I got sick, and they beat us in Scarlets. Um, so the, they're the one Welsh team that have beaten us. Um, and Albert, I'm sure, will know a lot about the South African players. Um, and he will know a lot about the bull psyche as well. Um, and they are, they not only did they beat Cardiff last week, they also drew with Benetton in Benetton. Um, so they 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 definitely they definitely a strong team and they definitely, I suppose, are not a team that you can go in underestimating them. Um, and as I said, they they beat us two years ago. In, in in Wales, so yeah, we'll take we'll take it seriously, Brim. Um, and again, no, not because of any different that it's it's another game, it's another opportunity for the Bulls to to you know to build on what they what they've built on over the years. And I'm not even talking about URC as a as a as a franchise, as a union, as a as a rugby club. You know, th- this is just another opportunity for ourselves to for ourselves to to do as best we can. Just away from the game, uh, one thing I wanted to ask you about, the 20-minute red card, um, just your thoughts on that. It's obviously you're receiving a lot of attention uh, across the world at the moment. Um, yeah, I'm not a fan, Brent. Um, I mean, obviously on Saturday, I would have loved the 20-minute red card because then David could have, you know, if he, I could have put someone else in his place. But uh, if you're <laughs> asking me for my opinion, I'm, I'm not a fan. I just think that, I mean, a red card is a red card, you know, and then... You know, now it'll become, is it really red? And should it have been red? And, you know, and if it's 20 minutes, then, you know, my fear is then 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 we might just go to, they're not sure you give a red and it's 20 minutes. So, you know, what we could do is make an orange card. An orange card is just between a red and a, and a yellow. And the orange is 20 minutes and then the red is completely off. So, yeah, I'm not a fan. I mean, a red is a red and there's a reason it's a red and there's a reason why you have to play with one man short and there's a, yeah, that, that's why I've always said that's why there was a red card. I just don't think we need to we make it tougher for the referees now because, as I said, is that closer to red or closer to yellow? And if it's closer to red, then it's twenty minutes, and if it's closer to yellow, then it's ten minutes. You know? And and I just think it will confuse people even more now. You know, and and that's why I'm complimenting the judiciary and the way URC ran this program, this uh, this judiciary and this hearing. He got red. Um, and he got found not guilty and it got rescinded and it was a yellow. You know, we don't then get another bonus point now. We don't then, you know, that is what it is. You know, so I suppose I'm I'm laboring on a bit, Brennan, but I, I'm not a fan that when you give reds and one's 20 and one's because all that'll happen is it'll just create another. It's not going to take the problem away. I think it's going to make the problem even bigger. Okay. No, thanks. Good luck for Saturday. Thanks, Brennan. <laughs> Um, Morgan, do you want to take it? Yeah, thanks, Lunga. Hi, Jack. Uh, you were talking just now about um, you know the the step up that you guys have made, and it um, and after the final earlier in the year, do you feel that you guys have come out the season mentally stronger because you've been in two finals, you've lost two finals, and it just looks like there is something different to your team in these first couple of games of the season. Yeah, I'm smiling, Morgan, because every time a journal asks me, you've been in two finals, you lost two finals. I mean, surely then, if, that, if someone was saying that to you, would you be mentally stronger? You know, wouldn't you then get up in the morning and say, I'm going to hear the whole season, how many finals we played and how many we lost? Um, then that would motivate you. So, yeah, I mean, that is, that's why I suppose, I suppose I'm, I'm smiling because in sport, the margins are so small. We've come close twice. I've said it many times. We've we've exceeded our expectations. Our average age of our squad in year one was 23, um, and that was like almost coaching a, a junior team, you know. Um, and we will inevitably get stronger, and we will inevitably become, become one year older. Um, you know, the the Hroblas and the and the Stienkamps and the Ruan Nokias and the you know the guys who've been with me, David Creel, those guys who've been with me for four years now. Um, they will inevitably become older, smarter, wiser, tougher, uh, and I've got no doubt that the the the, re, you know, the 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 
the way that they've got themselves into playoffs and haven't won must be a motivating yeah, really. factor. You're talking about you're talking about professional athletes that I mean you watch golfers when you see Rory miss a putt not to win a tournament, how gutted he is, even though he's won plenty, plenty times. So yeah, Morgan, it, it is exactly like that. We know we know that we've we've knocked over the last hurdle twice. We know what that feels like. We know how important winning is. We know how important bonus points are. We know how important tours are. We, because we've been together as a group. So if that is the case, and you're picking up that there's a, there's a different resilience and there's a different look and there's a different uh, determination that you read into this group of players. Well, then I'm really happy because that no, that, 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 that needs to that needs to happen. Thanks, Jack. Thank you, Morgan. Jake, thank you for the opportunity. I don't think there's much more to ask because you gave all the answers and everything. Um, yeah, just good luck. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Now we're looking forward to it. It's, uh, you know, one thing, Carl, when you're on tour, you spend a lot of time together. You talk a lot. You, you can, you know, you can have a lot more planning meetings. You can, you know, get to know each other. And so touring can sometimes also bring your team a little bit closer and spend a little bit more time talking about rugby, and and that's what's so nice about this group as well. You know, I know I know groups that get on, and groups that are happy, and groups that spend time together are teams that do well. And I can tell you that you know we, whether it's week two or week three, whatever, this group is getting stronger and stronger. So what Morgan said to me is is obviously pleasing. If there is a look of determination and it is a look of of something different, well, you know, then at least we know we're on the right track. Great stuff. Uh, Hello, Jake. Uh, Kurvis here. Kurvis. Jake, just a, just a word on, on Jan, Jan Hendrik Vessels at Lucent. Obviously, Howard opened the door uh, for him uh, with his injury on Saturday. But just a word on Jan Hendrik uh, getting a go um, in that number one jersey. You know my feeling. I mean, I, I still think he's going to be a very good hooker. Um, and the reason for that is because that I think he's got uh, age on his side. Um but he has played test rugby at Lucid, um, and it does create an opportunity for him to get a game. Um, and 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 he wants to play. You know, I can't keep him out forever in a day. You know, I've got Acker as the captain. I've got Krubi, who's a Springbok on the bench, and I just feel that uh, this combination against the Scarlets is one that we can we can work in our favour. You know, he's quick, he's strong, he's uh, he's a good athlete. Um, so it was a, it was a no brainer. I need to give him game time. He's fresh. He's another guy. I was should have mentioned, you know, just like Henry, just like uh, Zach, just like Kaba. You know, they're all fresh. They all haven't played. They you know they haven't been knocked around for the last two three weeks. So it's nice that they um, that they can come into this game fresh and, and ready. Uh, Jake, just lastly from me um, regarding Vili, presumably he returned home now for 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 his two weeks rest. Um, Ruan and Elrich, uh, are they staying on with the squad or uh, will they be available for the next two games or are, yeah. are they also on their way? I'll, I'll, Kubis, I'll pick my team next week and I'll give you who's <laughs> going to be here and not going to be here. <laughs> even if, they, even if they're there, they could still be here. You know, that's one of okay. the nice things about a nice, I must say, that's another thing that I'm really. I mean, I, I take it as as a given, and I take it. I don't take it for granted. It uh, our club is well, is in a our club is in a wonderful position where if we fly our guy back, uh, I'm okay. and we want to fly him back again. My mother's on an official BBC. Sorry, when we got when we got a club, we got a club that we want to fly someone in to win a game. You know, we can we can actually do that. So it's not a case of he's at home and he can't be here, or he's here and he can't go home. You know, I'm very fortunate that the the the. People that are involved in the club, the CEO, the president, and the shareholders, also have the players' welfare at at, uh, at heart as well. So, you know, I, I'll answer by saying this, Krubus: we we can pick whoever we need next week to win the game, and and you know that that's important as well. So, it just depends on next week what we do. Thanks, thanks, Jake. Good luck. Thank you, Jake. Um, I just wanted to check last week. I asked you about the backer for fly off, and you said it was going to be Billy, and that. Yeah. That was a brilliant move. There's not anybody that jumps out at me that can take over at 10 this weekend. Um, well, I could play Byron Smith there at 10. Um, so he would probably be the guy that would have to slot mm -hmm. in there. And he's been running there for us. He has played 10 for Free State. Um, and, you know, he'd have to just slot in and, and do a job. And again, uh, you know, 
if he has to play 10, I've got confidence that he can do a job for us with a with a team around him. Um, so MV, it's uh, you know, it's not it's not like a guy that maybe that people would expect, but I think again, part of being a team that needs to adapt. He, he's definitely one guy that can adapt mm. to playing 10 and 12. And with Henry there, it's going to be a bit of a different um, pattern, I suppose. Billy running things like a general. Billy, Henry plays a different game. Or yeah, it's it, it, it's something that I'm I'm really pushing hard with Kanan. I'm getting Kanan to to spend lots of time with Vili and 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 almost almost try and mimic what Vili does. You know, say what you know, just just learn from what he says, when he says it, how he says it. You know what he does in meetings and all that sort of thing. So Kanan has been given responsibility this week of of being the the mouthpiece um, and and. And and doing the things that Vili would have done mm. as a senior, um, and that is also it's nice to see him there because you know obviously a guy like uh, Kanan needs to grow, and he can play fullback, centre, and wing. So having him understanding the roles of everybody and and being able to talk about them and and communicate them and and feel comfortable in meetings to 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 be able to coach them to his teammates mm. is also going to make him a much better player. And he's, you're still uh, sh sure that Kanan futures at 13, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I still do. I still do. That's why he's enjoying it there. He played well last week. He probably missed a few tackles, which he was annoyed with himself with. But uh, mm -hmm. that's also because it's the centre combinations. It's him being at centre and then wing and then fullback. You know, yeah. I've probably got to be fair to him going forward and I need to give him enough time and enough training time to actually adapt playing in that position and that that will that will come down to us as a coaching staff to make sure we fear on him. We can't expect one week is a fullback, next week is a wing, next week is at centre, and expect him to be growing and growing into that position. So for this tour, I mean, he played centre last week. He'll play centre this week. Hopefully, you know, he'll play well enough, and we'll and we'll be able to play him there next week again. All right, great. Thanks.